Yeah. Yes. Philosophy is stupid. Well, that's not very uh, complimenting, complimentary to philosophers, is it? But some philosophers might agree with that. Philosophy, the English word, is derived from the Greek word philosophia, which can be translated as love of truth. And some philosophers postulate that there's no, no such thing as truth. Truth with a capital T here. So love of something which does not exist is stupid. How about that? <laughs> now all these, all these words exist, truth, love, these are all concepts that constitute a lot of philosophy. By the way, the statement, philosophy is stupid, definitely won't be much appreciated by grammarians because a conscious entity can be stupid or otherwise, but f the concept philosophy, just to say philosophy is stupid, is grammatically not very good. Now, if we just alter that statement a little bit and say philosophy is meaningless, then there are whole schools of philosophy which would enthusiastically endorse that because they say, well, everything is meaningless. And you wonder, well, what about the statement, everything is meaningless? If, if the statement, everything is meaningless, is true, then everything is not meaningless, because at least that statement is not meaningless. And these are the kind of things that philosophers are concerned with. The statement, philosophy is meaningless, will get a nod of approval by, from the grammarians. By the way, and I say, what's, what's the use of listening to this talk? I, just proving it's all stupid and meaningless, right? Ah, uh, it's just, what's the point of philosophers? They, they, they talk about things like, well, if a tree fell down in a forest and there was no one around to hear it, could you say that it make a sound? It made a sound when it fell down. And they use fancy words which make them sound very ooh, intelligent and intellectual, words like nominalism, epistemology, solipsism, and so on. Well, everyone has a philosophy at some level. If, if real philosophers or professional people, scholars in the universities who study philosophy, they're not very many, but everyone has a philosophy or maybe not a worked out philosophy, but everyone has a worldview by which they conduct their life, even if they're not aware of it. They have values. Uh, <clears throat> even if they say, I don't have any values, uh, that in itself is a value statement, that I don't value values. So it's very, it's not possible as a human being to escape philosophy. And so there you go. Philosophy is stupid because everyone's stupid, right? Mm. And everyone has a philosophy. So I'm trying to justify in various ways that philosophy is stupid. But even if you say philosophy is stupid, that in itself is a philosophical statement. It's a value judgment. It's not something that, that's measurable. There's no stupidometer that can tangibly uh, measure if something is true, not true, partially true, or just stupid. So it's a value judgment based on the way one views the world. For instance, if you're channel, well, why do you say philosophy is stupid? And then someone may say, it's obvious. He has to try and justify himself. And then you say, well, why is it obvious? And then he could say, oh, I don't have time to, I can't waste my time with all this. I've got better things to do in life. That means he, although he may not have thought it out, 
in a sophisticated way, he has an idea of how life should be led. And in his view, discussing philosophy is not part of the agenda. But what we're coming to here is that there's a concept of value judgment means a judgment of good and bad. This is good, this is not good. This is good, this is bad. And then the concept of evil comes into it. Now this is not simply something to pass our time when we're old and retired, we don't have anything else to do, or we don't, we don't have anything useful to study in the university like science, uh, so we go into the philosophy department. Uh, philosophy deals with ideas, and ideas have consequences. Humans are distinguished from animals because they can think in an abstract way. Now, everything I'm saying in, in this talk here could be challenged by philosophers, but that's true of everything that anyone ever says at any time, in any place, and any circumstance. Because philosophy, the work of philosophy is to question, question, question everything to try to find out the truth value. Uh, to, try to, to try to understand things uh, very deeply. Now, that humans are distinguished from animals by a sense of probing, trying to understand matters very deeply, uh, by the ability to think in an abstract way, at least it doesn't appear that animals have that ability, and a sense of good and bad. Now, sense of good and bad, animals may have to some extent. Well, certainly they do, because uh, in, in certain cer animals do things also impelled by desire to fulfill, to get a situation which they think is good for them and to avoid a situation which is bad for them. But again, particularly humans, they have concepts, or they can even think about what is good and bad. And getting to, back to that, ideas have consequences. Now I'm getting to why philosophy is important. It's not just, you can say it's stupid, but it is important because I, ideas have consequences. This is a very important thing to understand because philosophers deal with ideas. Ideas have consequences. To give an example, uh, one not very gentle man called uh, Adolf Hitler had certain ideas which caused havoc in the world. Now you may say, well, there are other factors in the uprising of the Nazi movement. and You may say that, well, it was all impelled by time determinism. But as I say, everything I say here could be challenged, but just without getting into too many complexities, let's just take it for granted. And pretty much everyone would agree, the ideas of Adolf Hitler were very bad ideas that had very bad consequences for the whole world and for many, many people in particular. Now you may say, well, that's obvious, isn't it? It's obvious that his ideas were very bad and very wrong and no good person or intelligent person would subscribe to them, but we find that huge numbers of people, literally millions of people, who considered themselves to be good, normal citizens of a civilized country, they subscribed to his ideas. They were convinced by them. So his ideas had terrible consequences, disastrous consequences. Here's a more uh, contemporary example uh, 
armed troops from the United States and other Western powers have entered, you can use the word invaded if you like, the countries of Afghanistan and Iraq <clears throat> are supposedly for the sake of democracy. That our idea of democracy and how people should live their life is so superior to the ideas that are prevailing and causing the polity and policies of the governments of those countries that we, for their benefit, need to bomb them, kill them, and occupy their country because our ideas are so much better. We need, they, they need to be killed to benefit them. The, the ones who are left will benefit them with democracy and every, all the good things that come with it. So there's an idea. Now you may say, well, that's a very sarcastic way of putting things. But uh, what is the justification for uh, American troops being in these countries? We're, we're doing it for their benefit. That means we have an idea that being in those countries, there are people in those countries whose ideas are so wrong about how we should live life and our ideas are so superior that we have that we have to go in by and forcefully uh, try to change the way they conduct their lives and the way they think about life in in general so that's philosophy these are value judgment if you, and then there'll be discussions to justify that you know, obviously democracy is a better way of life well you may say that but it's a it's a value judgment and again it's not uh it's not measurable we could say well people are so much better off and then you in under democracy but then uh, and then that's questionable also. If we see the, con the social condition of the United States of America, the great champion of democracy at the present time, then we might consider, well, maybe democracy is not such a good idea after all. So now this is bordering on politics and controversial things. And you may say, hey, I'm pushing some really, it sounds like some pretty left-wing ideas here. Uh, it, the fact is that there are many controversial issues in the world and the, what's underlying them is conflicting philosophies or understandings of what is right and what is wrong. For instance, abortion debates. Should abortion be allowed or not? Uh, if so, under what conditions? Discussions. Well, I think discussions have been pretty much shut down by uh, feminists, but there used to be discussions about <clears throat> women's rights versus traditional roles of women that it's proper for women to act in such a sense. How, how are you to say? We should have the same rights, women may say. So that's a discussion. There's an underlying philosophical pinnings. The idea that life is meant for freedom. Again, it's a similar thing to the idea of democracy being better because there's more individual liberty. That is important. Uh, that, that is the, the main symptom of an advanced civilization but then other civilizations their their philosophical underpinnings would say no the the duties of human beings are more important than their liberty so the duties responsibilities on one side and liberty on the other these are uh, these are in conflict and how much they can be uh, 
how much one can prevail over another. It depends on different philosophies of life. Uh, for instance, if we accept that reincarnation is a fact, as I certainly do, and that human life is meant for uh, over, overcoming, getting free from the cycle of birth and death, and it gives us a, a radically different outlook than if we think that, well, life, we only have one life, you're born, you die, there's nothing left, so let's just enjoy ourselves while we can. So in this way, con philosophies come in conflict. Now you may say, well, there are some things which are just obviously good. Uh, so where's the philosophy there? For instance, feeding the poor, that's good. Who can, who can contest that? Well, there are valid arguments that are influential in what would be called right-wing politics, which would say that, no, feeding the poor is not good for society as a whole, or even for the poor people themselves. It's not good. It's bad for them. You say, what is that? Well, there's a reasoning behind it. That means philosophy. The reasoning given is that <clears throat> if you feed poor people, then they, then they won't want to work. They become dependent on handouts. They don't get the strength of character to stand up and, and have their own self-pride and eat what, they can, uh, what they've earned. It's, it becomes a drain on the people who are working. The, the, some people are working very hard and other people are just parasites, so it's neither good for the individual or for society at large. So let the hungry be hungry, but give them a means. To, in other words, don't, don't just feed them, but that's a development of this, but give them a means or give them the opportunity to come out of that situation. In the meantime, let them be poor. Let them, let them suffer so they get some impetus to come up and improve themselves. What about this one? Uh, just applying philosophy just to show that philosophy is applicable in so many spheres of life actually everywhere uh, here's a, here's an example now okay say you're standing in an airport let's say los angeles international airport you're, you're just people are lining up to check in and someone comes, someone comes along and just starts indiscriminately shooting and killing people. So, to, and so that's bad, right? That it's not good to kill someone, they're not expecting it, and you just come up and you, you don't have anything, you, you don't even know the person, the person's involved, and you just shoot them, and that's very bad. This actually happened in Los Angeles International Airport some years ago that there were people were lining in for a LL flight to Israel. And what we would call a terrorist came and started indiscriminately killing people. Then a security guard came up and shot that terrorist dead. Now we would say the terrorist who was killing people he didn't know who they were. He was just killing them. He was very bad. And the security guard who didn't know the terrorist also came and shot him, killed him. And this, what the security guard did is very good. So what is right and what is wrong depends a lot on circumstances. Of course, the terrorist thought he was doing good. And the, 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 Many people who support his ideas might think it was very good. And they may say, well, that's why we need to be in Iraq and Afghanistan. We need to have our forces in there because if we don't get them first, they're going to get us. So as you can see, the conversations can become quite complex. Here's another one, a contemporary one at the time of this speaking. Uh, state governments in the United States of America 
Should they allow people to just go around and move around freely at the present time? Of course, they, that, that's a standard right of the citizen to move around freely. But then we see that many countries in the world, they, they've imposed lockdowns due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So we may say that the, the need of the, 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 for the greater good of the people, we need to restrict their freedom. And others will say, no, no, come on, you can't restrict our freedom. If we want to go out and infect others and become infected, that's our freedom. So these are, these are the kind of questions that philosophy deals with. In, and they, they may not be very easy. Uh, they may not be very, very easy to solve because if, if we get into the subtleties of them, we'll find that we say something and then some, some may say something else to counter that. And... To, uh, to understand what is good, what is bad, what is proper. Again, it, de it depends on value judgments about what we can... S ultimately, what it comes to is what is the purpose of life. Uh, if we say that everyone should be given as, as much freedom as, as possible. Well, as much freedom as possible means that someone should have the freedom to pull out a gun and just shoot others. And then you can say, well, someone else has the freedom to kill them also. Uh, what, what is the purpose of life, the meaning of life? Or if there's no meaning in life, actually, we live our lives with some purpose. We, we go out and work and earn money to fill our belly. And uh, we have some aim in life. If we... And we find that if people don't have an aim in life, then they become, generally speaking, they become quite depressed. And they want to love others. They don't, if they don't have someone to love, they may become very hateful or psychologically disturbed, or they may uh, project their love onto a dog or a cat. Uh, so philosophers are very concerned with understanding these things. And in this way, they hope to improve the human condition. So philosophy, is it stupid? Well, you can say that, but on the other hand, uh, it's important, it's essential, and it's unavoidable. Uh, it's essential. It is, in, in human society, we have to have laws, and laws are, are, are what laws are based on an understanding of what is good and bad, and then you have to consider what is good and what is bad, and not every person can sit around and think about these things, nor do they have the inclination, nor do they have the ability to do so. So it requires persons to think about these things very deeply. Uh, and it is elusive to understand all these things. Uh, I, personally, in this lifetime, as I say, I accept reincarnation as a fact, so I don't say in my life, because I've had many lives. In this life, I've based this life upon a philosophical understanding, which is <clears throat> radically different to that which is prominent or predominant in the culture that I was raised. Again, everything I say is subject to dissection <laughs> or uh, rebuttal by professional philosophers. I want to speak of deconstructionists. <laughs> <coughs> If you want to get into philosophy, please avoid deconstructionism. That's my humble request. Anyway, <coughs> three schools of what we can call Indian philosophy, although philosophy, if we say it's love of truth or understanding of reality, or if we, we use these definitions and it's not really Indian because reality is reality, in all times, places, and circumstances. Two plus two equals four is not an Indian proposition. So anyway, 
in the, the th there we can say there are three schools of philosophy which are prominent in the world today or um, two and one more mm, uh, Vedanta Buddhism and one more yoga <coughs> Indian philosophy and they all have as their starting point and again this could be contested, but just speaking in very general terms that could be widely accepted. They all have their start as their starting point the perception of suffering, pain, dukkha is the Sanskrit term. Uh, the, 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 that the human condition is pervaded by suffering and also accepted as axiomatic that this suffering continues life after life because reincarnation is accepted as a fact and so these three different schools although they have different approaches they all accept as the purpose of life the quest of human life to get free from the cycle of birth and death, of suffering, life after life after life. And thus there are the terms moksha, mukti, nirvana. The Gaudiya Vedanta school, the technical name for the particular Vedanta school to which I belong, um, postulates absolute reality. Oh, that's an important point. The good, bad. Yeah, that's an important point. I just got it written down here, but skipped over it. Good and bad. If you say there are so many different opinions about what is good and bad, then we come to relativism, which is a philosophical term. The, the, there is no, according to this idea, there is no ultimate good and bad. <clears throat> it's, what is good, what is bad, is relative to the circumstances, may be relevant, it may, it may be uh, seen differently in different cultures, uh, what is good and what is bad. Uh, we have to judge with, according to the circumstances. Um, and yeah, so, but the school of Vedanta, that I, actually all schools of Vedanta, they, they don't accept that there is, that, that relativism is ultimate. They accept there is an absolute reality. <clears throat> Absolute reality in Gorya Vaishnavism is accepted that beyond the, the relativities of this world, accepted that everything in this world is relative, but above and beyond that, there is absolute reality. Everything in this world is relative, that means what is seen of as truth, what is seen as beauty, what is perceived as wisdom and love, all these things are temporary and therefore have no substantive reality. They're not, in one sense, real, yes, well, again, in different schools of Vedanta, in, in, in Advaita Vedanta, all these things are unreal, or they're, they're illusory. In Dvaita Vedanta, Madhva's Dvaita Vedanta, this world is real. Now, does it mean that there are different ideas? No, they're not. It's, 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 one idea, it depends on your own idea. No, Madhva makes a very strong case that what we perceive 
is real and the, the perception of it as unreal, that is illusory. So these are all very complex matters, but just to, just to, after all, this is a very, very simplified introduction to very complex topics, intellectually very complex. But the Gorya Vaishnavas accept that there is, rea there is substantive, permanent reality, truth, beauty, wisdom, love, these are real, but not the truth, beauty, wisdom, love as we perceive it at the present time. What we perceive as truth, beauty, wisdom and love within this world is only a twisted reflection of the truth, beauty, wisdom, love, satyam, shivam, sundaram, the, the truth, the beneficence, the beauty, of the absolute reality <clears throat> and that absolute reality is the supreme person Krishna who is the ultimate source and repository of all truth beauty wisdom and love and that to re-establish our relationship in love with Krishna is the ultimate aim of yoga. Yoga means to link and transcends even <clears throat> the quest for liberation, for mukti, moksha, nirvana, that far superior to simply getting free from the suffering of this world is to enter into the bliss that is our natural uh, position of bliss in relationship of love and beauty with the supreme truth who is Krishna, the supreme person. So, philosophy is stupid. Well, we may say that some philosophies are stupid, but really the, qu the, the quest of human life is to search out and find the ultimate reality. And that is the very basic proposition of Vedanta philosophy. Atato Brahma Jignasa <coughs> are the first words of the Vedanta's the first sutra or aphorism or the Vedanta sutras, which means now we should, or now there is inquiry into the nature of ultimate reality. And ultimate reality, when you go through so many lifetimes of searching, we come to, as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Bahunam Janmanam Ante Jnanavan Maam Prapadyate Vasudeva Sarvamiti Samahatma Sudur Labaha. After many time, lifetimes of, of searching, uh, this philosophy, that philosophy, is this right, is this wrong, idealism, realism, uh, back and forward, this, that, inside out, mental gymnastics speculations, confabulations, changing philosophy, the early Wittgenstein, the later Wittgenstein, the in-between Wittgenstein. When we come to the end of it all, we find the supreme beauty. Reality the beautiful, Lord Sri Krishna. Now, obviously, you don't have to accept this. But, you might want to check it out. And you might consider that those funny Hare Krishna people who you see jumping up and down sometimes, singing and banging drums, uh, well, they might not be as stupid as you might think them to be. They actually have quite tremendous depths of philosophy. Check out their books if you want. It's up to you. 
It's a free world. That's a philosophical statement. How free are we? A lot less than we might think. That's another whole philosophical line of investigation. Philosophy is not the ultimate. Beyond, philo beyond philosophy is love. Ultimate love means love for Krishna. So I say, you want to find out? Then let's discuss philosophically, but not right now. Not in this talk. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Dante Nidhaya Trunakang Padayani Patya Kritva Chaka Kushata Meta Daham Ravimi He Sadava Sakala Eva Vihaya Duraj Chaitanya Chandra Charane Kurutanu Ragaha Vancha Kalpata Rubhya Shakripa Sindhu Evicha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha